Hello YouTube, today we're going to be looking at some of my unpopular fish, which does include my shell dwellers, so stay tuned. Alright, so here is where we are starting. Let me clarify, by unpopular fish I do not mean fish that are not cool or not awesome. These fish are cool and awesome, they're just not very popular uh, for a few reasons. One, they're pretty expensive. Usually these fish here, like the Parasipochromus blue neon in the back there, uh, even as fry, those can be as much as $20 each. Uh, they're really hard to ship. They're really fragile as fry. So buying them as adults, they would be even more. The Cipochromus bicolor here, I believe this is Cipochromus and Condé bicolor, but I'd have to double check my stock list. There's three of them in here. They do not interbreed with the Parasipochromus, which is nice. Uh, the camera does not do these fish justice. They are super awesome looking in person. You can really tell the blue neons. I put that black piece of paper back there a while ago to try to take pictures. It helped a little bit. So hopefully the camera is picking that up well. Uh, the nice thing is these Parasipochromus have not bred for me all year, but as you can see, we do have a holding female right here. So that's nice. There's actually a couple females holding. This one is a bit farther along than the others. The other reason, oh, there's one right next to it. This little gal right here is holding as well. One of the other reasons these fish are quite a bit more expensive than your standard fish is one, they only have spawns of about three to seven and they take forever to grow. So this spawn right here, these two little guys were the last spawn from, well, maybe this was January, February when they spawned. So maybe they have this year. And then you have, there's three generations in here. Here's the one before that. So super small spawns. These are spread across two tanks. So my numbers are slowly increasing. My goal is to get about 200 of them and then put them in a large tank and just watch them school around. So I don't sell them. I've had tons of people, especially locally, want them because they're so hard to get. They're really hard to ship because they're fragile. Um, but I so far have refused to sell any because I'm a jerk and I'm trying to build up my own population. So the other nice thing about this fish is that they do not eat their fry when they spit. They're super duper peaceful. Uh, probably the most peaceful cichlid in the world, in my opinion, these Parasipochromus. And they just look really good, especially when they hit that light just right. Just a beautiful fish. So next on the list, we have my Trophius. There are some Cinetilapia in here, which is this guy here. Well, that's a female, but uh, where's a the male? There is a good looking male right there, along with a Trophius. This is the Trophius and Conde Yellow. Not sure how many there are in here. There's probably about nine or a dozen right around there chasing each other. I haven't done an update on this tank in a long time either. Uh, the tank is looking pretty bad. You can see algae all over the front of the glass. Uh, I do run a lot of light on this tank because Trophius do love to graze algae. That's how you also get the green on the rocks, which is pretty awesome looking, I feel. The Cinetilapia do spawn in here, but they do prey on their own fry. There is actually a female somewhere around here holding. I might attempt to take her out because this is a really good looking smaller Ambuna. There's a good looking male there. They're super active. They do posture a lot, but so far not a lot of damage done. If any, I don't think I've seen any hurt fish in this tank. Now these trophies are growing insanely slow for me and it's been really frustrating. Last time I talked about these, I talked about how I increase their feeding, increase their water changes, and they still just don't do anything. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. They eat a ton. So far, no bloat. I'm afraid to even feed them more because uh, Trophius are really prone to bloat, but I don't know. I guess slow and steady wins the race. All right, so this tank is an absolute disaster. I'm not gonna spend much time on it. It's perfectly functional. Water parameters are perfect. It just doesn't look good. I don't scrub the glass. I really don't do anything in here. I'm just waiting for everything to grow out. Uh, there's some Xenotilapia, which is a sand sifter in here. I do have another colony of Parasipochromus blue neon. Because I love this fish so much, I do separate them in case something happens in one tank. I'll have a backup colony. So that's why I do that. And then there's also, these are tricolor trophies, although you wouldn't know it by looking at it. They look identical to the bicolor that we just looked at two tanks ago. However, these are jumbo, so they should get an inch or two bigger. Basically, everything in here is just here to grow out. So that's what's going on in this tank. Not a whole lot, just everything growing out. You can see I got the pot garden in here. This is where I put all my extra pots. And yeah, ha ha ha, pot garden. But uh, 
There are some fry in here. I don't see any at the moment. Of course, we got a couple token bristle nose plecos in here that don't do a very good job on this algae. This is the hard green spot algae that bristle nose won't even touch. I have tried to put mystery snails in here to fight that green spot algae, but they don't even last in this tank for some reason. There's shells all over the place. You know, whatever, this tank is just a mess and uh, that's just the way it's gonna be. All right, so now let's move on to one of my favorite tanks in the fish room. And of course, a lot of you know, one of my favorite tanks in the fish room is this 75 gallon Lake Tanganyikan community tank slowly but surely really starting to fill out the yellow calvis or compressiceps calvis i don't remember they're yellow uh, they're finally starting to grow out the julie dichromis malaria here are still breeding like crazy there's fry all over the place the gold ocelotus my pair still have not bred for me of course there's the token bristle nose pleco uh, this guy has been guarding this pvc pipe for a while but still no action the female has been hanging out over here so I don't know if they just can't decide where they want to spawn, but gosh, I hope soon to get a spawn out of them. Uh, of course, I do have Cyprochromus in here. This is Cyprochromus utenta. Really small colony. There's only about a half a dozen in here, and unfortunately, I lost the only female that was spawning for me. Uh, this female has just done nothing for me yet, unfortunately. And I don't know. Oh, we do have the Neolamprologus lelupi in here, or Lamprologus lelupi. I don't remember. I get confused. I have too many fish, too many names to remember. Jungle Val still doing well. Constantly have to trim it back from growing across the front of the tank here. But yeah, as you can see, this is just a really active, really fun tank. This is one that I can just sit and look at for a very long time. We do have Blackbeard algae everywhere, and I love that look. I have no problems with Blackbeard algae. I love how it looks and carpets everything. Luckily, it's staying off the Anubias for the most part, but there is a little bit on there, which is fine. It's not going to hurt it. This is a wild cod bristlenose pleco from Colombia. You can tell the difference in the pattern. And also has like little white tips on the tail, so coming out pretty good. I'm excited to see those get full grown. And thankfully, it's super easy to tell them apart from the ones that I've been breeding myself here. Way different color. There's a little guy, a couple little guys back here. Most of them do get eaten, but uh, out of every spawn, a few do survive. Won't be too long before this population of rock dwellers is out of control. I'd really like to get the Cyprochromus breeding again. Looks like the yellow calvis are having some fun. But anyways, I could sit here and watch this tank forever. Let's move on to the shell dwellers, shall we? All right, here we are, the 55 gallon shell dweller tank. Uh, this tank has been through a lot, so I was pumping this thing full of light, trying to get a moss wall on the back there, and it was going well until a few things happened. Obviously, I started getting a lot of moss down here, and I couldn't keep up. Not moss, what am I saying? Algae. Algae. Uh, anyways, so I started getting a lot of algae in the substrate on the shells and on the filter over here, as you can see, and it just became a real mess. The other problem is that this algae wall loves to collect dirt and debris. So while I was thinking I was gonna get a, a sweet looking background, all I did was get a big background of dirt. I've got multiple colonies going on here. You can see here's one dug out here, lots and lots of fry. One back here, lots and lots of fry. Now these two guys are really close to each other and they go back and forth all day long. Uh, we have another colony over here. We can see we got fry everywhere. Another colony right down here in front with another group of fry. Another one back here. So they just dig out these holes and go to town. Uh, this poor gal is just waiting for waiting for her man. She's been there a while. And then there's another male that dug out a pit over here, but he can't find a female. So, oh, and as you see, I do have some Cyprochromus in here as well. These are the Cyprochromus leptosoma speckleback moba, which is a mouthful. I uh, love me some Cyprochromus. To me, these are like the rainbow fish of the cichlid world. They get lots and lots of color. It just takes, these guys take even longer than rainbow fish to color up, if you can believe that. I've had these almost a year now, I think, and they're just now getting some color on them. Uh, it won't be uniform color, so they're called speckleback. As you can see, every single one of these are gonna look different, which is awesome. They'll all have a different pattern. You can see this guy has black and yellow. Sorry about the fast pan. This guy is black, yellow, black. So hopefully not too much longer and I'll start getting some fry out of those because these are probably 
out of the three different types of Cyprochromus I have, these are definitely the ones I want to breed. As you can see, I got a hang on front filter there, just trying to help clean up this water. I'm not using a pre filter sponge because I want it to pick up all that junk out of the water. The interesting thing happened though is that as soon as I let this algae go out of control, that's when the Cyprochromus really started breeding like crazy. So hopefully, when I get this algae under control, they'll just keep breeding. But honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these anyways. No, I do not sell them. I do not ship them. Let me rephrase. I do sell them, but I do not ship them. And hopefully with increased water changes to get this algae under control, the jungle valve will start to take off. As you can see, the jungle valve is nice and compact. That's because I was blasting this thing with light, so it didn't need to reach way up into the water column to get its light. Now it's starting to grow out, so hopefully that'll spread. But there is the rundown on the shell dwellers that people have been asking for for months. Uh, failed project, now trying to recover. So this is a nice surprise. I've never seen the eel out with the lights on, let alone see him eating. So it looks like he's finally adjusted and comfortable enough to come out and get himself some blood worms. So there you have it YouTube, some of the most unpopular fish that I keep, even though they are super awesome, they're still not very popular in the hobby. So I hope you liked the update on all these fish. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and I'll see everyone next time.